Welcome to your match year. This video is intended as a general overview of the 2021 R1 match year, specifically for Canadian medical graduates. For timelines and other detailed information, please visit carms.ca. Let's begin with a quick introduction video that captures the match process, what we do, and what parts of the process are managed outside of CARMS Online. Completing medical school is a major milestone on the journey to your medical career. The next one is completing your residency training. To do that, you need to take part in The Match, facilitated by the Canadian Resident Matching Service, an independent nonprofit created by medical students and faculties to ensure fairness and objectivity in the match process. Make sure you meet the eligibility criteria set by the provinces you want to train in. Then enter your background information into CARMS online. Select the programs that interest you and submit your application documents before the deadline. Programs will reach out directly to applicants they want to interview. After your interviews, it's decision time. Submit your rank order list, a list of the programs you want to train at in order of preference. Well, programs do the same with the applicants they want to train. The rank list is confidential, so neither applicants nor programs know who rank them. Rank order lists, along with the program's available positions, are entered into our match algorithm, which is designed to provide the best possible match outcome based on the applicant's choice. On match day, you see your match results through CARMS Online. As a matched applicant, you're ready to take the next step on your path to practicing medicine in Canada. Learn how CARMS can help you. CARMS is a national, independent, nonprofit organization. We've been providing a fair, objective, reliable, and transparent application and matching service since 1970, and we've matched more than 75,000 medical students to residency positions in Canada. The match can be similar to any other job application you've had, but with some key differences. You start by submitting your resume or application to the employer. Then, the employer reviews all candidates and decides who they would like to interview. The key differences in the match process include applicants and programs having to submit rank order lists. A math-based algorithm is used to match applicants to positions. And match results are announced at the same time and accessed through the CARMS online system. As you prepare for your match year, it's important to understand who does what during the match process. Examples of items that are part of the policy include things like eligibility requirements, document requirements, and the number of positions available in each discipline. These policies are set by the 17 Canadian Faculties of Medicine, the Provincial Ministries of Health, as well as the Association of Faculties of Medicine of Canada. Our role in the match process is to administer the online application service and the algorithm used to determine your match results. There are five phases in the match process. The application period, the file review period, interviews, followed by the ranking period, and finally, match results. Now let's go into a little more detail for each of these phases, starting with the application period. It is during the application period phase that you are to complete the bulk of the work that is to be done during your match year. The key steps to complete include, review the timeline to ensure you stay on track with the deadlines and milestones. Familiarize yourself with the program descriptions. Fill out the different sections of your application to include your education, training, work experience, and more. Upload the supporting documents you will need that are requested by programs. Assign the necessary documents to each of your programs. And finally, ensure you submit your applications and documents before the application submission deadline. As an applicant, you are expected to refer to the program descriptions quite a bit during your match year because they include a lot of important information, including the number of available positions, what the program's selection criteria is when reviewing applications, what type of documents they require, and what you can expect during your training should you match to their program. Current year Canadian medical graduates don't need to register for the match. 
a list of expected graduates is provided to CARMS ahead of time by your undergraduate office. This allows CARMS to begin creating the accounts, and on the day the match opens, we will send you a link so that you can complete the registration. You'll then be able to participate in the R1 match and pay the match fee. The match participation fee includes the first nine programs you apply to. Once you have used up those first nine programs, you must pay an additional fee for each program you select after that. You will also be prompted to review your applicant contract and complete some data sharing options. The CARMS contract outlines your obligations as an applicant, as well as the obligations of CARMS and faculties throughout the match process. One of the most important parts of your contract is that a match result is a binding commitment between you and programs. This means if you match to a program, you are contractually expected and required to begin your training there. The contract also states that you as the applicant are responsible for the completeness and accuracy of the information and documents you provide to CARMS and programs. The match violations policy is how CARMS enforces those applicant and faculty obligations set out in the match contracts. It's a way to ensure the process is safe and fair by requiring everyone involved to behave professionally, ethically, and responsibly. The policy includes examples of actions that could be considered a violation with sanctions based on their severity. What does this policy mean for you? It protects your right to a fair and safe match experience, and it holds you, but also programs, to account. Reporting a suspected violation will not affect your application or match status because CARMS will investigate and take the steps to resolve all alleged violations. So if you see or experience something, let us know by reporting it to compliance at carms.ca. Visit carms.ca forward slash policies to review the match violations policy. When you first participate in the match, you will be asked to complete a data sharing agreements form within the CARMS online system. You are in control of your data. It is up to you whether you opt in or opt out of having your data shared with organizations outside of the application process. Explanations of what the data will be used for is included within the online form. Choosing to opt out of sharing your data has no impact on your application or the match process. Examples of organizations we share the data with are the AFMC or your undergraduate office. Let's talk a little bit more about the data we release to your undergraduate office. The goal is to provide support to applicants that went unmatched in the first iteration and to help them prepare for the second iteration. Like all of the other data sharing agreements, you can choose to opt in or opt out of sharing your unmatched status with your undergraduate office. If you choose to opt in and you go unmatched, the unmatched status will be shared with your undergraduate office 24 hours before match day. Once they have your unmatched status, it's at the faculty's discretion to decide what they do with that information. Some might decide to reach out to you right away, while other faculties might not. It simply depends on their own local policies. Here is a glimpse of the CARMS Online system for applicants. The screen capture specifically shows the My Information section and all of the items within it that are available to you once you participate in the match. The system was designed to accommodate what programs want to see in an application. However, you are only expected to complete the items that are relevant to your own education, training, and work experiences. If a section doesn't apply to you, you don't need to worry about it. If you wish to see more on what the CARMS Online application looks like, visit our YouTube channel, which has various instructional videos. Programs can request a variety of documents, which they list in their program descriptions. They are the medical school transcript, medical student performance record, proof of citizenship, personal letters, a photo, reference documents, and there might also be other documents requested by programs in addition to these. Providing proof of citizenship is always required as a way for programs to know you are legally able to work in Canada. 
You can have your legal status verified within CARMS Online through the Medical Council of Canada, also known as the MCC. If your legal status is not verified through the MCC, you will need to upload and assign a notarized or certified document as proof of citizenship. Citizenship documents are the only type of document you upload that must be certified or notarized. Acceptable documents can vary by province. If a province doesn't accept something like a Canadian passport, for example, then you must ensure you have another type of citizenship document the province has listed and assign it to the programs within that province accordingly. CARMS offers and facilitates translation services through a third-party translation company. We offer this service so that you have a centralized option within the CARMS online system and you don't have to coordinate it externally. Once the original language document is in your account, you can request a translation under the designated translation request section of your CARMS online account. For the medical transcript and MSPR, you will have the ability to review the translation once it is complete. This service is not mandatory, so you can use another official third-party translation service if you prefer. As an applicant, you are responsible to know the application deadline. You must have assigned all requested documents and submitted your applications to programs prior to the deadline outlined in the R1 match timeline. Any application submitted or documents assigned after the deadline will be timestamped as late in the system. It's at the program's discretion whether they accept late documents or applications, and some programs might clarify this within their program description. Once the deadline has passed, we now begin the next phase of the match process, file review. Although the majority of the work now shifts over to programs to start reviewing applications, it's now the time for you to begin preparing for any possible interviews. Use this time to review program descriptions, as they may include information regarding the program's interview process. Practice those interview skills, whether it be through mock interviews with your undergraduate office or with peers. And in a couple of slides, we will talk about how you can now begin reviewing the Interview Offer Status section of your CARMS Online account. That brings us to the interview phase of the match process. During this predetermined interview period, we encourage you to review the interview guidelines available on CARMS.ca. The interview guidelines explain your rights as an applicant and also includes examples of appropriate and inappropriate interview questions. The Applications to Programs section in your CARMS Online account allows you to review the complete interview schedule for all programs and the general interview dates for the programs you've applied to. You will be assigned one of the following statuses by each program you have applied to. Selected for interview, not selected for interview, you can be waitlisted, which is a temporary status. The program is not conducting interviews in this match or iteration. And lastly, the application was submitted after the interview status update deadline and the program is not obligated to update your interview status. This tool is designed to help you know whether you should expect an interview offer from each program. It is not a tool to actually schedule interviews. Once interviews have completed, it's time to rank. During this period, you must create your rank order list and submit your rank order list before the deadline. You are able to edit, save, and submit your rank order list as much as you want up until the deadline. We recommend you begin working on your list as soon as it opens and don't wait until the last minute to submit. Once the deadline has passed, you will not be able to modify or second-guess your rankings because the rank order list deadline is final. The best way to approach how to rank your programs is to rank them in your preferred order, your most desired program as your number one rank, and go from there. You must only rank the programs you are truly willing to match to. If you are unsure you would accept a position somewhere, then you don't need to rank that program. 
there's no obligation to rank a program after an interview. Maybe you realize during the interview process that this program is just not the right fit for you, and that's okay because you don't need to rank them. If you speak with programs and they express interest in you, remember that these seemingly reassuring conversations are not official nor binding. There's no way for you to know if the program will rank the same way in the end, so the only thing you can count on is your own preferences. This all refers back to your CARMS contract. When you add a program on your rank order list, you are establishing a legal binding commitment in the event that you match there. Here we have an example of what a rank order list can look like if someone has more than one discipline they are interested in. In this instance, they ranked a few pediatrics programs based on their preferred schools and locations, followed by the same schools and locations, but in the family medicine discipline. CARMS Online also provides the ability for you to submit a rank order list as a couple, should you have a significant other or partner. When submitting a rank order list as a couple, the process is a bit different than ranking as an individual. You and your partner's ranks are considered mutually. This means if applicant A is not able to match to their first rank, then applicant B can't either. Because of this, you have the ability to rank the same program multiple times. The goal should be to come up with as many combinations as possible between you and your partner. If you have identified a partner in the system, and then you decide you no longer want your match result tied to them, you can easily retract the couple option so long as it's before the rank order list deadline. When ranking as a couple, it might seem a little bit daunting to try and come up with all of the different combinations. But there's an easy way to organize your rankings by following these scenarios. Start by ranking programs that are in the same city. Once you and your partner have exhausted those combinations, then rank the programs that are in different cities but still close in proximity. Then, rank programs that are further apart. And finally, the no match option. This is typically used as a last resort should one partner be willing to accept a no match result in order to try and allow their partner to match. Now let's show you an example of a couple's rank order list if we were to follow this method. Number one indicates programs ranked in the same city by applicant A and applicant B, Calgary to Calgary, Edmonton to Edmonton, and so on. Followed by the different cities that are still close in proximity, Calgary to Edmonton, and Edmonton to Calgary. Then we have the cities that are a bit further apart. And finally, the no match option. You can see from this example that this couple was able to come up with 555 different combinations using this method. Once all programs and applicants have submitted their rank order lists, we use the match algorithm to determine match results. Let's watch a brief video that explains how the algorithm works. CARMS uses a globally recognized algorithm to match medical students and residents to postgraduate training positions in Canada. The algorithm's job is to create the best possible combination of matches given the choices of applicants and programs. To do this, it needs three things. One, the number of available positions for each program in the match. Two, a list of preferred applicants from each program. And three, a list of preferred programs from each applicant. These lists are called rank order lists. The algorithm optimizes applicant and program outcomes based on their respective rank order lists. It starts by attempting to match the applicant into their highest ranked program and moves down the list until a match is found. There are no hacks or cheat codes. All participants need to do is rank what they want in order of their true preferences. And it's safe to do so because rank order lists are confidential. Our biggest match includes more than 5,000 applicants and 650 plus programs. But let's simplify by looking at a scenario with four applicants applying to three programs. Applicant Singh ranked plastic surgery at General first. The program also ranked Singh first, so it's an immediate match, and the program has filled its one position. 
Applicant Garcia's first ranked program is Dermatology at City. She tentatively matches there. Applicant Gagnon ranked three programs. The algorithm starts with Gagnon's first choice, plastic surgery at General. But it's already been filled by a higher ranked applicant, Singh. So it moves to the second rank, Family Medicine at City, where Gagnon has been ranked second by the program. Since there are two positions and Gagnon is one of the two highest ranked available applicants, it's a match. Applicant Lee's first rank is Dermatology at City, where there is one position. Lee is ranked second by the program, but their top ranked applicant, Singh, already matched to a preferred program, making way for Lee to match here. As the program is now full, the algorithm removes Garcia's tentative match, revisits her rank order list, and moves on to her next rank, Family Medicine at City, resulting in a match to the last available position there. In this example, all applicants have been matched to a program. However, it is possible for an applicant to go unmatched. There are three reasons this could happen. One, they weren't ranked by a program they ranked. Two, they didn't rank a program who ranked them. Three, the program was filled by higher ranked applicants. To learn more about the algorithm and best practices that can help optimize your match experience, visit carms.ca forward slash algorithm. Using this algorithm ensures a transparent and stable math-based process, and it generates best case match results based on applicant ranking preferences. It goes down your rank order list to try and match you to your programs and not the other way around. It will only begin moving down your list once it's absolutely clear that a rank will not result in a match. For more information on how the match algorithm works, please visit carms.ca forward slash algorithm as we have a great collection of frequently asked questions. We have finally arrived at the phase of the match we've all been waiting for, match day. On match day, you will be able to log into your CARMS online account and access your official match results under the designated section. As mentioned in the video, it's possible for applicants to be unmatched and there are three main reasons this could happen. The applicant was not ranked by a program they ranked. The applicant did not rank a program that ranked them. And finally, the applicant was ranked by a program they ranked, but the program's number of positions were already filled by preferred applicants. Unmatched applicants from the first iteration can try and match using the second iteration. All phases of the match remain the same, but with a more condensed timeline and some additional key differences compared to the first iteration. The second iteration will only include positions that went unfilled after the first iteration, so not all disciplines will be available. They also may not be available in every location. Positions may also become competitive. Competitive means if a stream was previously offered as a stream for Canadian medical graduates during the first iteration, it may become open to international medical graduates for the second iteration. This would be the decision of the province. Those who are currently doing residency training are also eligible to apply in the second iteration. We invite you to visit carms.ca and browse the data and reports section. There you will find over 60 reports covering match results of previous match years. There is also data showing the relation between applicant reported electives and match results. An interactive tool with 10 plus years of data specifically for the R1 main residency match. We also share all of the PowerPoint slides presented at the annual CARMS forum, which includes endless data information on the most recent match year. There are multiple resources available to you in the times leading up to or during your match year. As mentioned, there's the carms.ca website. But we also have a help center available 24-7 where you can find answers to your frequently asked questions about CARMS Online or the match process. When participating in a match, we send you email reminders and important information to help you stay on track. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube channels.
Contact our amazing client services team by phone, chat, or email with any questions or should you need any assistance with the CARMS Online system or match process. Thank you for taking the time to watch this general overview of the 2021 R1 match year, specifically for Canadian medical graduates. For timelines and other detailed information, please visit www.carms.ca.